Welcome back to the Doctor Disaster Daily Show. Uh, today we are going to be discussing something that is near and dear to my heart. A subject that I have been covering on this channel for a long time. A long time, as many of you know, I have been claiming that Disney Plus is nowhere near as profitable as they claim, even though it is not profitable. Uh, they, they don't even claim that it is profitable, and I've been saying that it is worse than they claim. Uh, it is nowhere near as big as they claim, at least in terms of subscribers. Uh, and I also believe that it is not a sustainable business model. I believe that Disney Plus will be looked at uh, 10 years from now as a big boondoggle. I believe that a lot of these streaming services will will all come together. They will essentially be new cable. We'll look back at these streaming services uh, like we do Blockbuster Video in about 10 years or so would be my guess. I don't know the exact timeline, of course, but that would be my prediction. Uh, in any event, investors in the company have sued have sued some of the members and former members of the upper brass at Disney over uh, claims of fraud. <laughs> you dumb bastard. They, they're claiming that they were fraud, uh, defrauded, I should say, uh, by, by Disney, saying that the, the Disney Plus uh, subscription service is much more profitable than it actually is. Uh, we're going to dig into that. We're going to dig into these claims, we're going to take a look at an article, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. I'm excited about the prospect of this lawsuit. Uh, I would love to see Discovery. Uh, you know, I'm no lawyer, but I do know that one of the most interesting things in these cases is often the Discovery process, whereby uh, the the people who are alleging misconduct or whatever, they, they get they get access to some of the inner workings of a company. And, and if, of course, it, because of this, I, I predict that they will settle this out of court. My prediction is that Disney, uh, they, they're not going not gonna to let anything come of this. They're going to settle this out of court, and we will not ever really see their inner workings. They will protect that information very jealously, as all these corporations do. Uh, they will make a payment of some kind, and the investors will be forced to sign some kind of non-disclosure agreement. But we'll see. We'll see. What do you think? Do you think Disney is going to pony up out of court? Do you think they're going to let this go to court? Or do you think uh, it's all full of crap? Do you think that Disney is just completely on the up and up? I'd love to hear what you think. Drop your comments in the comment section below, and we will discuss it. Uh, in the meantime, I will be uh, enjoying my schadenfreude as usual. Let's take a look at this article from PiratesAndPrincesses.net. Former Disney CEO Bob Chapek, along with Kareem Daniel and Christine McCarthy, named in class action lawsuit over Disney+. Plus. A lawsuit has been filed in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California by lawyers, blah, 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 blah. The suit names former Disney, -o, Disney CEO Robert Chapek, Kareem Daniel, the chairman of Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution, and current CFO Christine McCarthy. The pension fund alleges that under the Disney reorganization in 2020, Bob Chapek and other defendants used the restructuring to hide the actual performance of Disney Plus from investors, including the costs and losses. The filing says that the defendants repeatedly misled investors about the success of the Disney Plus platform by concealing the true costs of the platform. 
concealing the expense and difficulty of maintaining robust Disney Plus subscriber growth and claiming that the platform was on track to achieve profit profitability and 230 to 260 million paid global subscribers by the end of fiscal year 2024. Uh, yeah, this is something, as I, as I said before, that I have been discussing on this channel for a long time. They have been doing their best to ramp up their numbers to make it look like they are doing a great job way ahead of schedule way ahead of schedule and in fact uh they, they they're trying to make it look like they're going to do that they're doing a better job than they're ever going to do i've discussed hot star uh disney hot star on this channel for a long time hot star as many of you probably know by now is the disney plus uh streaming service uh, in india and the noteworthy thing about that is that it is, its cost is a fraction of what we pay here in the States. I think I worked it out as like one eighth the cost of, of what we pay in the United States uh, over there. Um, and, and a lot of the people in India that, that subscribe to it do so because they want to watch uh, cricket. They have, they have tremendous amount of cricket games, apparently. Uh, it's not a sport that I watch or know anything about, of course, but uh, it's something that is very popular over there, and many people over there subscribe to Disney+, Plus, or they used to anyway, because of the, the cricket matches that they no longer have. So a bunch of people, as you may remember last week we discussed, uh, have been unsubscribing from Hotstar, uh, which, you know, it isn't as big a deal because it's one-eighth the cost of a subscription here in the States. And last week, reporters, the Disney shills out there, have been using that information to defend Disney. To be like, hey, it's not even that big a deal. We didn't, we're not even losing that much money. You know, it's just a hot star subscription. But yeah, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, when Disney Plus's numbers were, were exploding, when their subscriptions were going way up, they didn't mention it then. They didn't go, well, actually, we're not even making that much money. No, no. They, they made it sound like they were the biggest, baddest, uh, new, new badass on the block, that they were going to be taking over streaming. Uh, what, look at our numbers absolutely explode. Well, you're, you're not that impressive because, of course, as I said, they are just bloating their numbers, or they were anyway, and they still are, because there's still over 50 million people uh, in India that are subscribed to Disney Hotstar. Uh, so, roughly a third of the subscriptions of Disney Plus uh, pay one-eighth of what we do here in the States. That is, that is misleading. Uh, to say the least, and I, I once again, I think that these investors that are that are suing Disney have at least a small point. I, I am not a lawyer. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know uh, if this is. It seems like it'd be something that would be difficult to prove. They, they at least have a point. They at least have a point. Uh, continuing on in the article, as of the last quarter. Disney Plus has 157.8 million subscribers, far from the target of 230 to 260 million by September of 2024. The plaintiffs argue that Disney used a low introductory cost and additional short-term, low-cost promotions to increase the numbers in an unsustainable way. They also say that Disney used the newly restructured DMED branch to hide the Disney Plus losses and make the streaming service appear more sustainable. Sustainability. Let's talk about that for a minute. Sustainability. So, Verizon. I, I told you guys the other day, uh, I had a Verizon subscription uh, that allowed me to stream Disney Plus at no additional cost. Now, I know Disney receives... A, a some kind of monetary uh, benefit, some kind of uh, some kind of money from Verizon in order to provide that service to all of their customers. I know that they get something for it, but it is not the what twelve dollars a month or whatever it is that we pay here in the states. I, I don't know. I've never paid for it. I've always gotten Disney Plus for free. Of course, I'm unsubscribed now. 
I decided that free was entirely too much money for me to be spending on Disney+. Plus. I do not want to be one more number in their total number of Disney Plus subscribers, you know, misleading people, just like what we're talking about. I do not want to be just another number. I, I'm over it. I'm out. I'm, I, and I also don't want my kids to have access to these shows. I don't want them to be able to see things like Turning Red, as I discussed the other day. I don't want that. I have a little five-year-old girl. I don't want her to watch that. She doesn't need to be learning about periods at this age uh, while, while watching this big fluffy red animal that looks appealing to a five-year-old. She doesn't need to be seeing that. That's nonsense. I'm not going to do that. It's not in my household. So uh, I can't believe it actually took me this long to, to make the decision to pull the plug and get them out of my house. I'm, I'm over it. Anyway, yeah, they, they, they're not sustainable uh, because of this sort of thing, though. Uh, people people will take the free subscription. A lot of people out there that they don't have, you know, the they're not as invested in this as I am. You know, they they're not. They'll take the free thing and just deal with it. Most people will. Um, but you know, how many how, how many people I wonder are are just subscribed to Disney Plus through Verizon? I know that Verizon has uh, over a hundred million uh, different you know people, different customers. They have 100 million accounts last uh, by, by my last count. So, jeez, uh, with that in mind, <laughs> what in the world, um, how many of them have Disney Plus? Because all you have to do is just have a, a unlimited streaming account and you have access to Disney Plus for free. How many? I I'll bet you it's a lot. I'll bet you it is a lot of people. I would be willing to bet that of the remaining 100 million subscribers, roughly, uh, to, to Disney Plus that aren't Hotstar accounts, I'll bet you that like a third of them at least come from Verizon. So uh, that leaves, what, like 60-something million subscribers that, that are actually paying the full amount? That's, that's not very good. That's not very good. It's not very sustainable, especially when you compare, uh, you know, the, the little amount of money that they're making then uh, to the cost of all of these shows that aren't even doing very well on Disney+. Plus. But let's keep on reading here. The current and former Disney employees are also being accused of using the DMED branch to shift costs around from Disney+, Plus to other legacy platforms, to make it appear that Disney+, Plus was more financially successful than it was. Specifically, the suit mentions the mysterious Benedict Society and Doogie Kame Aloha, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, which were first aired on the Disney Channel before landing on Disney Plus. As part of a scheme to make Disney Plus's financial performance appear more successful than it was, defendants aired certain shows that were supposed to be Disney Plus originals, such as the mystery show The Mysterious Benedict Society and the medical drama Doogie Kame Aloha, first on legacy television networks such as the Disney Channel. By doing so, a significant portion of the marketing and production costs of the shows were shifted away from Disney Plus and onto the legacy platforms. So, what they're saying then is that Disney was making it look like these costs for these shows belonged to Disney Channel rather than Disney Plus in order to make it seem like Disney Plus was not the financial boondoggle than it is. That it is. So, with that in mind, you want to know why these people are pissed off? Let's, let's take a look at Disney stock prices right now. Uh, as of this recording, the stock is at $92.86. Let's look, though, at the last few years. Uh, you can see that in March of 2021, Disney was riding high. So this was, you know, a year and a half, a year and like four months or whatever, a year and some change, since Disney Plus had been... Uh, you know, released. So we've got 197.16 appears to be the absolute most expensive that the stock was. That was March of 2021. 
a year and a few months since uh, Disney Plus was released in late 2019. It was like November 2019 that it was released. And it had been on this upward trajectory ever since that time period. I mean, it dropped for a while, I guess. So November of 2019, it was $150. It dropped like a rock right around the time COVID hit. And then it went soaring up all the way to uh, March of 2021. That was its height. Uh, and people were pissed because during that time period, the numbers were being artificially inflated and people were being uh, tricked, you know, defrauded into thinking that, that these numbers were better than they were. At least that's what they allege. Uh, you know, I am no lawyer. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, a member of of Disney or anything. I don't have any inside information, but that's what they're alleging, and that's what it seems like, at least to me on the outside. That's my opinion, is that they have some small point, at least. You know, one of the one of the things that, that really sits in my craw, and would especially if I were an investor in this company, is the fact that they keep on putting out all of these shows with, with agendas, with woke agendas that are absolutely killing the company and killing their reputation. We're doomed! 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 They're, they're making them... You know, Disney is known as a family-friendly company, but not anymore. Not anymore. The Too many people are, are getting PO'd. They're getting turned off entirely by this company and the decisions that they make. Let's take a look real quick at the... Uh, at some of the Rotten Tomato scores for these shows on Disney+. Plus, If you want to talk about unsustainability, yeah, here we go. Let's look at National Treasure, a show that was just recently canceled after one season. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes score, 49%. Over half the audience couldn't stand it. So the show isn't on TV anymore. Let's look at the recently released Peter Pan and Wendy. Uh, 12% audience score. 12%. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they they race swapped uh, Tinkerbell because of course they did. Uh, they race swapped it. Looks like half the damn cast, according to to you know a lot of reviews. Twelve percent though. That's absolutely pathetic. She Hulk. Yeah, Marvel's in on this. Thirty three percent. They absolutely spat in the faces of people who don't want to see this woke bullshit. Thirty three percent of the audience were okay with She Hulk. That's not good. Not good at all. Uh, Star Wars is in on, in on it as well. Now, if you look at The Mandalorian, historically, in the first two seasons, they had a 93% audience score. And if you look at The Mandalorian overall here, it has a 78% audience score. And you might think, well, you know, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. But then you look at Mandalorian Season 3, which came out after, of course, the Gina Carano incident a few years ago, which pissed everyone off. Now we have a 50% audience score. People are tuning out. That's abysmal for a Star Wars project. Uh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, 63%. Featuring, a, a show featuring Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. For absolute love of all things holy. How can you screw that up? Even the Book of Boba Fett, 54%. A show, if you had told me like 10 years ago, oh, they're going to come out with this TV show that features Boba Fett, I would have been freaking out thinking that was the coolest thing ever. They ruined it. Uh, you know, you look at, I, I think that it would be wonderful if there were lawsuits uh, on Netflix as well. I think that Netflix, you know, they put out this woke garbage like Cleopatra. Uh, last I heard, it had like a 2%... Uh, audience score. Well, not even the critics liked Cleopatra. This is absolutely pathetic. Um, I think there should be lawsuits against Netflix. I think that they should at least attempt to sue. If you are an investor in Netflix and these people are wasting your money on these vanity projects, this woke BS that doesn't even make sense. She, she, you know, that Cleopatra was not black, period. Game, set, and match. Like, it's not even up for discussion. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's ahistorical. And people are absolutely tired of this. They're, they're over it. So, yeah, I, if I were uh, an investor in Disney, I would want to get in on this. If I were an investor in Netflix, I'd want to get in on this. These people are wasting your money. And they are hiding how 
poorly they're doing uh, behind all of these little tricks, it would seem. Thanks for watching, me hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty 